Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Um, our last video I forgot to say, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe. Which also means you got to hit the button for the little bell because that way you'll get notified audibly every time we add a new video. So by all means, please subscribe. Okay, I did that. All right, moving right along. Last thing we did last video, we were working on this Evo motor still, which I guess has turned into a full-on career for me. Dear mom and dad, you'll be happy to know that I have a new career. I'm building an Evo motor for the rest of my life. No, it's almost done. We're, we're doing fine. Bobby's waiting for it. And Anyway, last video we put the... Uh, lifter blocks in and all the lifters, tappets if you will, which includes a tappet screen here, timing plug, uh, sending unit for the uh, oil pressure warning light. So we're getting there. What I wanted to do right now is prepare these cylinders and rings for installation. Now I've already honed these cylinders. I don't know if you can see it but I already honed them with a really nice cross hatch. They're all finished and ready to use. And so that's what we're doing. Now, installing rings is no big deal. The only thing that makes it a big deal is how careful you really want to be. How careful a job do you want to do? And, you know, with the price of all this stuff that we put into our bikes, a lot of money, a lot of time. Boy, we get a lot of fun out of them. I just, I am I know I'm slow, and I apologize for that, but when I'm done, I'm usually pretty well satisfied. Now, before we check the rings for fit, what we're going to do is wipe this cylinder down one more time. That's isopropyl alcohol, and these are white uh, paper towels. I was taught in a machine shop. <laughs> oh, that's off of the rag. I mean, really. That's how I get for using red rags. Should use green rags and it'd look green. Okay. Or orange rags for Halloween. Anyway, look at how clean. Okay. And we'll clean them one more time before we assemble them to make sure they're as clean as we can get them. Okay, now, these cylinders, we already mic'd them, checked the piston fit and everything before proceeding any further. Evolution motors get an awful lot of miles on them before they actually need boring, and, and that's pretty neat. i got to admit, they really did that well. We don't get that kind of miles out of the old cast iron cylinders. These things really, really work well. That way they get a lot of miles out of them. Anyway, so we're going to put a new set of rings in them. So what we need to do is look at the specifications in the service manual. Now, right here, it says compression ring side clearance. Two to four and a half thousandths. What that means is the fit between the ring and the ring groove. Now, after I've put it on, I'll do a final fit. A final check, I mean. But for right now, I just want to make sure that I'm not wasting my time here. So this is a three thousandths feeler gauge. Now three thousandths falls pretty well between two and four and a half. And I can slide that in there and it's a tight fit. So that means we're right on the money. That's real good. Now after this ring is on the piston, I will probably check it again. But this is the top ring. Now, every time you pull a ring out of the package to check it on something, you want to be sure you put it back into the package before you take the next ring out to make sure you never mix them up. Top ring, second ring, these all go according, according to plan. And as you can see on the package here, they're marked 1, 2, and 3. 
top ring, middle ring, and bottom rings. So this is a top ring, and what we're going to do is we're concerned now with the end gap. When this ring is on the piston and we set it in the cylinder bore, the size of this gap when this ring is in the cylinder. So what we're going to do is slide it into the cylinder carefully. Okay, it's in there now. Now, most guys take a piston and just turn it upside down and use it to get this ring square in the cylinder. You really want it square in the cylinder because that's the way it's going to fit and that's the only way you can measure that end gap accurately is if the ring is sitting really where it's going to be in the cylinder. So I'm using a tool, I am the tool freak, rather than a piston. If I use that and I'd move it all the way around and get it even, then I know that that ring is straight in the bore. Okay, now I'm going to take my feeler gauge. Do I need to get a flashlight in there maybe? No? Okay. And I'm going to check it right in that end gap. And there it is. Now what I did is I put in 14 thousandths. I mean, granted, I knew where I was going here. And they say on the compression rings between 7 and 20 thousandths. So we've got a whole bunch of room to play there. But I want to be sure we have adequate end gap. And boy, it's right on the money at 14, which puts me exactly where I'd like to be. I always figure on an evolution about 14, 12 to 14, and there is 14. But it varies with each type of motor, and you want to be sure and check that stuff. So we're checking the side play, the end gap. We'll put this one back in back into the uh, package. Now we'll go to the second ring. And it's in there. And we'll check it with a tool again. Make sure that we're consistently in the same position there. And I'll bet you it's going to measure about the same. You know, we're very fortunate that nowadays we have real consistency with the quality parts that we can buy. And boy, that feels like 14 again. Makes me real happy. One of the things you always want to remember is when you get ready to do the second ring, there's going to be a dot on it, and it has to point upwards. We're not there yet. Now, I've already measured these rings, your oil control rings, and I've already done that. I don't feel like going through it again here. So I think everybody got the idea on how it's done. So now I think what we'll do is put the rings on the pistons, now there are tools for doing this and I don't mean to badmouth them or criticize them or anything like that. It's just that I'm so used to doing it with my fingers that it's much easier for me to do them with my fingers. And you'll find a lot of old mechanics are that way. Just get them carefully spread. Well, here, that didn't work very well. Don't do well being watched, if you want to know the truth, but I don't think anyone does, so. Okay. But again, this is your oil control ring. And here we go. 
go right over the expander right down into place and away we go so this is again the oil control ring rings I always want to call it a ring or it's actually a I guess you'd say an oil control ring set because there's three pieces to it and there it is and once we get it on there it's on we'll be moving around and positioning them okay now we'll get to the second ring now as I mentioned before on the second ring and it really pays to read everything when you're doing this there is a dot and I don't think the camera can even pick it up it's a dot right there on the ring very hard to see but that dot goes up now you always want to check depending on the brand of your rings you always want to check all that sort of thing and there is the second ring now we're going to put the top ring on and it has no dot on it so either side up is absolutely the same for this ring again I'm going to spread it as little as I need to there we go and now it's on now when we get ready to install this which will be in the next video what we're going to do is consult the book again because there are positions for these rings to be in before we install them so that's what we're going to do next and that pretty well gets us going here on this so in our next video again we're going to install the uh, the pistons and the cylinders on this motor and then about all we'll have left is uh <laughs> the cylinder head assemblies and the intake manifold and a few other things so until then see you out on the road